Hi, this lesson is from section 2.1, Greatest Integer. Um, and let's first start by taking a look at uh, what the greatest integer function looks like. Uh, when you read it in your text, it has a certain um, symbol, but when I write it on the whiteboard or I'm going to write it on my paper, I'm trying to use these, what what looks like brackets but with little extra thingies in here. They're not absolute value signs and they're not brackets so you see how it has like a double double bracket on the end. Um, that's what I'll use for for greatest integer. Um, again I'll use it on my paper and I'll use it on the whiteboard and if I put it on a test or a quiz um, I will put after something like this I will put a comment uh, or a comma and then I would put the greatest integer function. So you'll know exactly what I'm doing there, that it's not absolute value. Okay. So that's greatest integer. So you already defined what is an integer and you know that integers are things like negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1 and 0, and 1 and 2 and 3 and dot dot dot. So they look like whole numbers but it does include zero. So that's the definition of an integer. So when we talk about a greatest integer, um, the visual aid I like to use, I'm going to draw a number line, and I'm going to put a couple things on the number line here. All right, so I've got eight, and I've got nine, and I've got seven. Okay. So the visual aid I like to use is, you know when you're driving down the road and you see those green, at least in Michigan, they're green, roadside um, mile markers. So I'm driving in this direction and um, when I see a seven, I know I have passed seven miles. And then of course if I see an eight, I know I've you know passed eight miles on this particular stretch of highway. And if I see nine, I've passed nine miles. Um, but if I'm right here at 8.5, so I'm driving along here, I know I've passed 7 miles because I saw the mile marker, I know I passed 8 miles because I saw the mile marker. There is no mile marker for 8.5, but I know I've gone more than 8, but I know I haven't gone 9 yet because I haven't seen that mile marker. So an example here is if I want the greatest integer of 8.5, the greatest integer of 8.5. Well, think of the mile marker. That's the greatest integer or the greatest whole mile that you have passed on the road. And that turns out to be 8. It's not 9 because I haven't got to 9 yet. 8.5 um, is not an integer because it's not a whole number. So it's 8. So here's another example. What's the greatest integer of 9? Well, 9 is an integer, um, and 9 is certainly the greatest number, or greatest integer in 9, so that would be 9. Alright, so let's modify what we're doing here and just change our color. a couple things. Let's erase that. Let's erase that. Let's erase these things. Alright, now we're going to change the color to red. Let's make this negative 8. That means this is negative 7. That means this is negative 9. Okay. So the greatest integer of negative 8, well what would that be? So negative 8 is an integer and it is the greatest integer in negative 8. So the greatest integer of negative 8 is negative 8. Alright, so let's do another one now. Now I want the greatest integer of negative 8.5. This one's just a little tricky. So 
Remember, you're driving along here on the highway. So here's negative 8.5 right here. Because we always drive in this direction. Well, you saw, and here you have to kind of use your imagination a little bit. You saw mile marker sign negative 9. And then, of course, before that, you saw negative 10. But you haven't seen mile marker um, negative 8. So if I'm asking you the greatest integer of negative 8.5, it's negative 9, because negative 9 is the one you passed, if you use the visual image of the mile marker sign, but it's also the greatest integer contained in negative 8.5. Okay. <coughs> so that's what greatest integer is. Now let's do just a little bit um, different example. And let's change our color here to something else. So the greatest integer function those things can also act as grouping symbols. And grouping symbols is a fancy word for parentheses or brackets. So if I had some equation, let's just make something up here. I've got 2 times the quantity of x plus inside here I've got 3 plus y squared something like that and all that is squared so I just made something up here but you can see I use parentheses as grouping sim symbols and I used uh, brackets as grouping symbols well the greatest integer is also a grouping symbol too so what that means is you're going to do stuff inside of there first before you do stuff outside of there so let's do an example using greatest integer symbols. So there's the greatest integer, negative 2x plus 1. Greatest integer. So notice how all of this stuff is inside of here. Oops, sorry, I'm right there. Hard to see the yellow. Okay. All of that stuff is inside the greatest integer. So I need to do the stuff inside first. All right, so let's put in here a function. And let's put in here 3.1. So we want to evaluate this function when x is 3.1. All right, so this is what it looks like. The function at 3.1 greatest integer symbol, negative 2 times 3.1 plus 1. Notice how all that is inside the greatest integer function. So I'm going to do the inside stuff first. So negative 2 times 3.1, well that's negative 6.2. And then negative 6.2 plus 1 is negative 5.2. And I'm taking the greatest integer of negative 5.2, running out of space here, and that's negative 6. So see how the greatest integer symbols also act as grouping symbols, too. So I made sure I did stuff inside first, and then after I did all the stuff inside, then I took the greatest integer.